So as guitarists, particularly around the intermediate level, I tend to find that we get pretty comfortable with a certain way of playing chords. So if you see a song that says that there's a D chord, you know, maybe you're on ultimate guitar, you're going to play this one, probably nine times out of ten. Um, and I think that this is something that's really, really wonderful for unlocking creative potential when you're either writing music or when you're playing music. Because a lot of the time when we, you know, go to a website like Ultimate Guitar, like we all have, to find chords for a song, we play these open chord shapes that were the first chords that we learned on the guitar. And we never really take it further than there. And then we listen to the song and we can tell that this is not exactly what's happening and we'll maybe try to mimic what's happening. But it might just be a really simple D chord like this. Something like that. And we'll try to mimic that up here. And I think that it's a little bit of a shame because we're kind of robbing ourselves of understanding the guitar a little bit better and being more limitless when we make music. I'm a big fan of the idea that the more you know, the more tools you have at your disposal. So today I want to take a look at all three inversions that we can play of triad shapes on the bottom two sets of strings. And what I mean by that is when we play these triads, there's four sets of strings that we can play them across. We can play them across E, A, and D. We can play them across A, D, and G. We can play them across G, or sorry, D, G, and B. And we can also play them across the top strings, G, B, and E. But so today we're going to be looking at the bottom two string sets, so E, A, D, and A, D, G, because these actually happen to share the exact same fingerings and shapes, which is wonderful for us. So it's kind of like a two for one special. Without further ado, let's look at these chords and I'll talk to you a little bit about how you can practically apply them as well. So for our root position triads, let's start in the friendly key of D major. And that's going to be this shape here with my pinky on the D on my A string and I make this major shape. Now here's the wonderful thing is that to play these harmonized major scales, which is how we're going to practice the triads, you only need to know three different chord voicings. Uh, so there's major, which looks like this, there'd be minor, which looks like this, and then there's diminished which is minor with a flat five, if you don't know. And this is also wonderful because it lets you really visualize the changes. Like D major is this, and it goes root third, fifth. And if I know that a D minor chord would have a minor third, I take this major third and I drop it a fret. And then to make it diminished, I drop the fifth as well. But okay, let's now take these shapes and I'll have them, the diagrams appearing up here like I just did there. Uh, and we'll take it all the way up the D major scale. So this exercise would be called harmonizing the major scale in triads. And if we wanted to be really specific, these are root position triads. So my chord goes root, third, fifth, always. So we start out with D major. We're gonna move that up to E minor. So now I'm using my middle finger on the D string there. Then we would get F sharp minor. Our four chord in the key of D is going to be G major. Then we're going to get A major as our five. We're going to keep going. We will get B minor. If we keep going a little further, we get the C sharp diminished. The nice thing about this seven diminished chord is that it happens all the way up the neck, so it's a little bit easier to make that big reach. And then I'm going to round it off with another D major. Now we're not totally done yet because we're going to go back down because we might as well double down. So now we get this 7 diminished, C sharp diminished. We're going to get B minor, A major, G major, F sharp minor, E minor, and then we get D major at the end. So now let's take a look at how these chords would work if we were playing them as third and bass chords. So the way that this works is this triad shape is a root, third, fifth. We're going to do them with the third in the bass. So let's pick the key of, we'll do B flat. This is going to be my major shape. My minor shape is going to look like this. And my diminished shape would look like this. So 
Let's try to take these all the way up the neck. And remember, now the layout of our chords, because our third's in the bass, it goes three, five, one. So it's like we took the one from the bottom of the chord, and we just bounced it up to the G string. So we get B flat major here. We get C minor here. D minor. E flat, our four chord's going to be major. To F, it's going to be major as well. That's our five. Here we get G minor. We're going to go up to A, diminished, and then we're back at our B flat. And just like we did before, we'll go back down. So now A diminished, then we're going to get G minor, we're going to get F major, E flat major, D minor, C minor, and then we end back at our B flat major. So remember, if you get lost, you're following your root. It's now no longer at the bottom, which is something that intermediate guitarists also really love to do, is only play root position chords. But now we're looking at our G string for our root when we do this exercise. <laughs> Tried to make that B flat minor at the top. Okay, so now we have one more inversion to cover, and that's gonna be our fifth and bass chords. So now fifth and bass chords, or second inversion chords work exactly the same as the previous two, but now our notes are going to go five, one, three. And we're gonna do this in the key of F major. So, this is my major shape. To make it minor, it's gonna be this. And then to make it diminished, it looks like this. So now we're following our root up the D string and it's gonna look a little something like this. So we get F major, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, there we get E diminished, F major, E diminished, messed up my fingering a little bit there, but we get C major, B flat major, A minor, G minor, and then F. And now really quick, I'm going to give you just to demonstrate, I'll do a really quick speed round. So if you move this into different keys, which I strongly recommend that you do, you can use all of these same shapes on the bottom three strings as well. So for example, if rather than D major, I did A major, on these low strings, I can use exactly the same shape. So these are root position, harmonization of the E, or sorry, A major scale. We get this, A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, G sharp diminished, A. So everything that we just did with our root on the A string, or our lowest note on the A string, will also work on the E string as well. So it's kind of a two for one special, which is awesome. So these diagrams are for free for download on my website. I strongly encourage you to uh, check them out. And if you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel here and I'd love to have you along for the ride. If you'd like to take a lesson with me, there's a link to that down below that'll take you to my website as well. I would absolutely love to work with you on whatever's troubling you on the guitar. I've also got a new video coming out at least every Monday and Thursday right now. I'm really trying to grow my channel, so I've been uploading quite a lot more than that lately, but every Monday and Thursday is my promise for the time being. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm so grateful you made it to this point of the video. So I really hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for making it to the end. I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope you get to have some fun playing the guitar and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.